Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's part 18 of DP203 exam Q&A series, we are going to cover 10 important questions covering a lot of different topics and concepts in DP203. We have already covered 206 questions in last 17 parts, including a case study that was covered in part 15. Highly recommend you to watch all the previous parts of this series for the full course coverage. In case you'd like to learn in the offline mode, then you can get a free PDF file containing all the 10 questions with answers discussed in this video. And for that, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 210 and 216. Similarly, if you want to get the PDF file for all the previous parts, the links for all the previous parts are shared in the description box. So let's begin the part 18 on DP203 exam Q&A series with question number 207. So let's read the question. The question says that you develop a data ingestion process that will import data to Microsoft Azure SQL data warehouse. The data to be ingested resides in Parquet files stored in an Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage account. You need to load the data from the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage account into the Azure SQL data warehouse. The solution given here is the first point is that use Azure Data Factory to convert the Parquet files to CSV files. The second point of the solution is that create an external data source pointing to the Azure storage account. And then we have third point which says create an external file format and external table using the external data source. The last point is load the data using insert select statement. Does this meet the goal? The correct answer for this question is no, this solution is not meeting this business goal. So what is the correct solution? There are two more variations of the same question. Let's see both the variations and then I will show you the correct solution. Here comes the next variation. The question is exactly the same. Let's read the solution. The first point in this solution is create an external data source pointing to the Azure storage account. The second point is create an external file format and external table using the external data source. The third point is load the data using insert select statement. Does this solution meet the goal? Well, this time as well, my friends, the answer is no. So what is the correct solution? Let's find out in the next question. Here we have question number 209. Once again, the question is exactly the same. This time we have solution in which the first step is create an external data source pointing to the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage account. The second point is create an external file format and external table using external data source. The third point is load the data using create table as select statement. Does this solution meet the goal? And this time my friends, it's a yes. So this solution which is given here meets this business goal. Now, if you want to understand the process of loading the data from Azure Data Lake storage into dedicated SQL pools in Azure CNAPS Analytics, then this is the Microsoft documentation. Here, Microsoft has given the guidelines on how to use the copy statement to load the data from Azure Data Lake storage. They have also given few examples on how to use the copy statement across all the authentication methods. I have provided the link for this documentation in the description box. You can read whenever your time permits. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 210. This one says that you are moving data from an Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage to Azure CNAPS Analytics. Which Azure Data Factory integration runtime would you use in a data copy activity? Your options are Azure SSIS, Azure IR, the third one is self-hosted and the fourth one is pipelines. The correct answer for this question is option B Azure IR. Moving on with the question number 211, a very interesting question based on the queries. Let's read the question. Here it says that you have an enterprise data warehouse in Azure Synapse Analytics that contains a table named Fact Online Sales. The table contains data from the start of 2009 to the end of 2012. 
you need to improve the performance of queries against the fact online sales by using table partitions. The solution must meet the following requirement. The first one is create four partitions based on the order date. The second requirement is to ensure that each partition contains all the orders placed during a given calendar year. How should you complete the TSQL command? And here my friends, you can see that we are given with one transact SQL statement, which is creating a table called fact online sales. We are also given with the column information along with the data type. In the bottom part of this query, we have this partition clause and we have to tell whether we should go for the right or the left clause for this partition table. Further, we also have values. So we have to pick the values for this partition table as well. Now let me tell you the correct answer first and then I will give you the justification. The correct answer for the partition clause is that we have to choose left here and the correct answer for the values part is this one where we have to choose the year based partition. Now coming to the left clause, the range left, this specifies the boundary value that belongs to the partition on the left, the lower values and also you should understand that the left is the default value. Now coming to this part here, you can see that we have chosen the option which gives a partition based on the year and why we are doing so because the question says that we need to create four partitions and for which four years we have to create partition. It is 2009, 2010, 2011 and 2012. That's why we have chosen this partition because it gives a value of partition for each year. If you wish to understand more of this create partition option, then this is the Microsoft documentation. Here you can see that we are given with the entire syntax of the same query that we just saw in the question as well. Here you can see that we are given with the table option. We are also given the data type. The partition is also given with the range that can consist left or right. And if I zoom a little bit more, then you can also see that the documentation says that default is left. Similarly, you can read a lot more and understand this query on this documentation. Now let's move ahead to the question number 212. Let's read the question. It says that you are performing exploratory analysis of bus fare data in an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account by using an Azure Synapse Analytics serverless SQL pool. You execute the transact SQL query shown in the following exhibit. Here we can see that we have one query given here. We have a select statement which is choosing payment type and it's also grouping the data based on the fair amount. Then we can also see the from clause followed by the with clause, group by clause and order by clause. Now due to the scarcity of space, I could not fit the question in this page itself. So let's go to the next slide and see what is the exact question. Now the question says that you have to use the drop down menus to select the answer choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic. Now here in this answer area, we can see the first part of it says that the query results include only in the CSV slash bus fare folder and your options are CSV file in the trip data underscore 2020 subfolder or the files that have files named beginning with trip data underscore 2020. The third option is CSV file that have file names containing trip data underscore 22. Then we have CSV files that have files named beginning with trip data underscore 2020. The correct answer for this part of the question is the last option given here. Moving on to the next section of the question, it says the query assumes that the first row in the CSV is and you have to choose between a header, a data or an empty row. And the correct answer for this part is a header. Normally, we always have a header in the CSV files. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 213. It says that you have an Azure subscription that is linked to a hybrid Azure Active Directory tenant. The subscription contains an Azure Synapse Analytics SQL pool named pool one. 
you need to recommend an authentication solution for pool 1. The solution must support multi-factor authentication, MFA and database level authentication. Which authentication solution or solutions should you include in your recommendation? To answer, select the appropriate option in the answer area. Here you can see that we have to answer of course on two levels. The first one we have to make a choice for MFA which is multi-factor authentication and on the second part we have to choose an answer or the option for database level authentication. The options given for MFA are Azure AD authentication. The second option is Microsoft SQL Server authentication. The third one is passwordless authentication and the fourth one is Windows authentication. And the correct answer for the MFA or multi-factor authentication is that we should go for Azure AD authentication. Moving towards the database level authentication, the options given are application roles, contained database users, database roles, Microsoft SQL Server logins. And the correct answer for this part of the question is contained database users. This brings us to the next very interesting question, question number 214. The question says that you are designing an inventory update table in an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool. The table will have clustered column store index and that will include the following columns. You are given with some information here. Let's read it out. The first one says event date and the comment given against is that 1 million records are added to the table each day. The second one is event type ID. The comment says the table contains 10 million records for each event type. Thirdly, we have warehouse ID and this one says that table contains 100 million records for each warehouse. The fourth one says product category type ID and this one has a comment that says the table contains 25 million records for each product category type. Moving on, the question says that you identify the following usage patterns. The first one is analyst will most commonly analyze transactions for a warehouse. The second one says queries will summarize by product category type, date and or inventory event type. Then it says you need to recommend a partition strategy for the table to minimize the query times. On which column should you partition the table? Your options are event type ID, product category type ID, the third option is event date and the fourth one is warehouse ID. And the correct answer for this question is option D, warehouse ID. Moving on with the next question, question number 215. This says that you configure monitoring for an Azure Synapse Analytics implementation. The implementation uses Polybase to load the data from a comma separated value which is CSV files stored in Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 using an external table. Files with an invalid schema cause errors to occur. You need to monitor for an invalid schema error. For which error should you monitor? Your options are given here. Not possible to read all of these options, but let me quickly tell you the correct answer. The correct answer for this question is option B. You can read all of the options given here in your sweet time. For now, I have given you the correct answer. Up next, we have question number 216. This one is the last question for the part 18 on DP203 exam Q&A series. Let's read the question. The question says that you are working on Azure Data Lake Store Gen 1. Suddenly you realize that you need to know the schema of external data. Which of the following plugin would you use to know the external data schema? Your options are IPv4 lookup. The second option is MySQL request. The third option is pivot. The fourth one is narrow and the fifth one is infer storage schema. And the correct answer for this question is option E, infer storage schema. And the reason for the same is that infer storage schema is the plugin that helps in infer the schema based on the external file contents when the external data schema is unknown. So that's why we have chosen this option as the answer to this question. I hope you enjoyed today's questions on DP203. Please do not miss to watch our other exciting Q&A series on DP900 and AZ104 that also includes multiple case studies. 
and on top of that we have just started a series of azure fundamentals which includes all the latest changes that have come from microsoft on 28th of october 2022 so please do not miss to watch that azure fundamental series in case you are absolute beginner on azure and you want to kickstart your career in azure cloud and friends to get all the timely notifications of all these interesting q a series on various cloud certifications please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon to receive that timely notification and of course if you got any value today please like and share this video to help us reach more and more people who are learning cloud you can also join us on facebook instagram and twitter where you get regular short updates in cloud space and for today i want to thank you very much for learning with us i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and i look forward for them we will meet again in our next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching